program is about today. Gladys Smith and Linda <laughs> Maurer, I lost you, are our presenters today with help from Doug Morgan. And it's really a neat history that we're going to learn about. But before we start, Friends of the Library here is getting started again. It was in operation for about five or six years and then kind of dwindled. And now we're trying to get it up and going again. So I'm going to pass around, and you can take one if you'd like, a schedule of what we have coming up. We have today's program. We have a general meeting on March 31st where we're going to plan our book sale, and that's going to be on June 6th. And we certainly hope, there's two right here if you need them. <laughs> you want a front row company? And um, uh, that's going to be our general meeting. Thank you very much for coming. We're always surprised any, that anybody's interested in Southland. <laughs> Makes us feel good anyway, doesn't it, Linda? We're starting out with a map from the 1872 Atlas. And you will notice that on the map, we've got Hamilton Station here. And that's South Lima. A number of years ago, it was Hamilton Station. On the South Lima Road here, all the uh, land south of South Lima Road is in the township of Livonia. <clears throat> Can you hear me back there? Yeah. I do not have the ideal speaking voice, but uh, the south, south side of the road is in the town of Livonia. The north side is Lima. And up here on the corner, on by Garden Street, well, the I won't say Garden Street, but it's, it's, the, uh, Swan 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 it's uh, the township of Avon. So it does make it very hard at certain times when we want something done to get something done, as you can understand anybody here that knows about politics and government. <laughs> so anyway, a short history <coughs> about Livonia and how we got started with this. Uh, slideshow. Back in 1989, the township of Livonia celebrated their bicentennial. And they, because a part of South Lima being in the township of Livonia, they asked us to participate. And on our committee, John Murphy from Livonia, maybe some of you knew John Murphy. He had just retired from the Strong Museum in Rochester. So he had the know-how and the ability to run things from Strong Museum. And he mounted a photo show. And what we did was collect old photographs from all of the hamlets in the township of Livonia, Lakeville, Livonia, Livonia Center, and so forth. And we took all the photographs and put them together, and John took them and blew them up. I should have had this one. He blew them all up to this size. Oh, wow. Ooh. And all in the sepia tones. And it was really great. Uh, we borrowed the screens, the folding screens from Strong Museum, and he mounted this great show. As a result, we ended up with all these prints. And a lot, I had been collecting information and pictures from South Lima for a number of years. And I had bought postcards, what was available, and so forth. And Ethel Hyde, how many of you remember Ethel yeah, Hyde yeah, yeah. in the store? <laughs> Ethel gave me the greatest number of pictures, most of them of the muckland in South Lima. Uh, everybody knows what muckland is? Yeah. All right. And they are great. You got that book? Mm -hmm. It's out of the car. I don't oh, know. it's out of the car. Okay. All right. Uh, she gave me a lot of the pictures. And also, as we went on, 
people would keep giving us pictures and so forth. We've got a lot that are not into the slides yet, but we hope someday to get them in. And that's where the pictures came from, from collecting from people in South Lima that let us borrow the pictures. And that fall, Linda and Russell Mauer moved into town. And they were historically minded. And when they found out we had these pictures, they said, let's make a slideshow. And that's what they did. And so as a result of this, we've ended up with this. Back in the early 1990s, Linda and I showed these several times, but it's been a number of years. So if the senior moments <laughs> affect me, you understand. And Linda is to jump in and help. <laughs> okay. And if, if anybody has any stories and we're showing anything, if you, you know, had relatives or friends or were in South Lyme or worked them up in South Lyme, if you got any yes. those stories to tell, just yes. speak right up and, you know, jump in and, and tell us your stories. So. Yes, please do. When South Lima, we know that the first settler was the uh, Bronsons. And they lived up on the west end of town on the highest point, of course, because South Lima was, at that time, was known as Goose Island because it was all swamp land down into the lower part. And the Bronsons were there in 1802. And the railroad came through in 1854. And that's when the population started really growing. But when South Lima first started and, and farming started, it was mainly celery, onions, and carrots. The last 40 years, it's mainly potatoes for a number of reasons. But this is just an example. This is not a packet from South Lima, but it's an example of what we did raise there. And this is the onions, and again another onion. This is looking south, to south, south from down on the fields towards the hamlet of South Lima. We're not just sure where, but it's okay. This is another one of the pictures that came from Ethel High. And Back about 40, 35 years ago, I went to an estate sale in Geneseo of a Mr. Allen, who was a lawyer there. Maybe some of you recall that. The books out in the garage were for sale. 50 cents for hard copies, 25 cents for paperbacks. And I'm looking and I go through and this hardback book said, Muck Farms. And of course, I had to look at that. And when I opened it up, here's a picture. Maybe, maybe it was this one. I can't remember. But of South Lima muckland in there. And we know that in 1913, the Depart Department of Agriculture sent a gentleman to photograph and write about the muckland in South Lima and Elba in Potter, New York, any place around here that had monthly. And this book had all these prints in from South Lima. What we think happened was that the gentleman probably came on the train into South Lima and boarded with Ethel and her mother. Because in Ethel's things in her house, uh, before she died, she gave me some of these, were the exact same prints that were in the book. So we think that that's where she got these pictures that she gave to me. And I do have the book. Um, Doug has it right now, looking at it. But you can see in the background there is, if you're driven through South Lima, the uh, big potato storage farm there. <laughs> with four little ventilators. Who blows there at the top? Now these are crates of onions, I guess. Um, if they're set so close together, it makes you think that they really 
produce quite a few. But it's also interesting, I'm just going to interrupt for a second, how they don't feel that they're like measured out, the spacing. You, you notice that a lot mm -hmm. in, in the fields. It's like everything is just perfectly straight and lined up, and, and even their crates, they're just like, you know, they're just like thrown out, and you know, do it now, they're like, you know, whatever, you know. But it's just everything which is very precision done, you know, and it just it's, it makes such a nice picture, just pretty uh, amazing. It's a pride, I think, in, in their work. We do know that this is Ethel Hyde as a young girl there. Uh, we're not sure. We think this is one of the Griff Rath girls. But we're not no, really sure. But the, she probably looks to that's me. That's Mabel like Burdick over there on the uh, left. And that's Burdick? George. Yep, and that's George Burdick in the front. Oh okay. my gosh. Is Bob here? Your friend Bob? No. Oh, all right. She works on Sundays. Oh, all right. <laughs> Doug has a neighbor who was from South Lima originally, and she has come up with some new photographs that we haven't had before, plus identifying uh, some of these people for us. This is, you can see up in the corner here, the C.C. Moore Storage Room. This is a bunch of men working on, we assume they're potatoes, I guess that's what they are, maybe they're onions, uh, in the storage, bagging. It's probably crates for the uh, onions being up here like this. But this is the storage crew. They've got their sign up here in the corner if you can see it. This Settling right, Russell. Is this celery? Potatoes. Potatoes, right? <laughs> uh, this is Russell's father and his brother Earl. And this is John Porter from South Lima. But you worked in the field with a hole in the rake. You know. <coughs> and again, Another picture of the potatoes. Yeah, the digging the potatoes there, the horse drawn potato digger, and got the crates again all set out there, mm -hmm. perfectly, perfectly spaced out. You know. Lin Linda's fascinated by the. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it's neat looking. It's really neat. It looked like a pretty good deal there of potatoes, too. And there's probably farmers here that remember this very well. Yes? Just remember, you just have to pick them up by hand on your hand and yeah. yeah, I did that too. I think they're going to eat South Lima. Or I did a lot of that. You went to work for the farmers on the month and every kid started that way. You're right. As Gladys said, now uh, they primarily, uh, potatoes is what they grow back there in the month. But uh, back then, the potatoes weren't really grown as a to, to ship out, that was for like the home families, you know, holding through the winters. It was the onions, celery, and lettuce was the main thing they shipped out at that time. The potatoes was just for their own, their own use. Some more, uh, and they also sold it lettuce, and again, this is not from South Lima, but it's just indicative of it's, what it's, was it's really fabulous for growing you know, spinach, lettuces, any greens like that. I remember when we first moved to South Lima and we so uh, plowed up a couple of acres in the back and we grew a lot, we almost, almost had the whole two acres full. And we grew romaine lettuce there. I used to sell it to some of the restaurants in the area and they, I could grow two pound heads of romaine lettuce and they were just huge. I mean, I'd take them to uh, different places and they couldn't believe how huge they were. But it just, it's just, uh, the soil was just so rich and any greens and spinach and stuff like that just grew like crazy. And again, lettuce, lettuce with a second planting coming here. That's what we think, that they, they plant and all the rows and then once they harvest those, then they have a, a second one coming. But again, it's, you know. It's and a reminder to everybody, make sure you put the names of everybody that's in the pictures on the back of your pictures, because someday you're going to run into the same trouble that we have here. We don't know who they are. So Gladys and I looked, we looked through these slides the other day and we said it looked like they all you know, knew that that was going to be photo day, that they all were dressed similarly, except that 
that third guy in from the left there, he didn't get the memo, and so he had something different on there. So he didn't have his uniform. He didn't have his uniform. They all look really proud, all you know, standing there. Who takes pictures of that, you know, these right. days, but it's, it's interesting how they, they took so many pictures then. Celery was a great project in South Lima, and you know, the title of this show today, Celery Capital of the World. Yeah. And there's a lot of people doubting that. And I said, if you see it in the newspaper, it's got to be true. <laughs> <laughs> Back at that, that was just an example of what you, your first celery, as I remember, as the little girl was always white. That's you know? we, they used to put quartz on them and then they yeah. put the paper on them and bleached it. Yeah, we got, we got a slide coming up to show then, that. Then they started coming up with pastel celery, what we call them. Right, right. This is Clara Quackenbush. Oh, Raymond Quackenbush's wow. wife. Now look at, look at the length of the that stock of celery. Evidently, I don't know who grew it, but they wanted to really show it off. And so this is Clara. Um, it's from that family. Um, I mean, something I just thought of to mention. I, I think you have one. I know I do. It's a, a, at that time, they had a set, what was called a celery base. Where they had yes. a, a special yeah. for, now you see everybody you know, cuts up the, the celery no, and sticks. Yeah, I don't now and just lays them, you know, down on that. Yeah. But they had it was like a tall vase, glass vase, and then the, and the celery would be, you know, put a little water in there and so they would keep it nice and crisp. And the celery you put on the table to serve was in this vase. And that's how they served the celery. It was much more elegant than you know now how they do it. That that's the one you were talking about there. To, to blanch the celery so that the sunlight didn't get to it to keep it nice and white, they put these these white like planks called celery boards mm -hmm. up on the side and and, um, and they had a, to a keep clamp, the sun off of it. A wire clamp. <laughs> yeah, clamp to hold it up. Yeah, well, if you ever have anything out on the lawn, down. you know, if something lay on your lawn and you move it and the grass underneath is is white because the sun the sun yeah the sun had gotten to it so that's that's how they. Uh, so when you grow a uh, cauliflower too, they take the, the leaves and you can you know, bring them all <coughs> and tie them up and that'll keep the sun up and your, your cauliflower will stay nice and white and yellow. And, and around South Lima, I mean, when we moved into our house, the barn was just full of those celery boards up in the rafters. And, and uh, we had our, we first moved in and had a new roof put on the house and they pulled off the shingles. There were celery boards on the roof. And once, yeah, so yeah. once the, the, the celery farming, you know, years later it was over with, everybody had those boards and they got used for, I'm sure, you know, kids used them for tree houses and, you know, the multi Made out of oh yeah, sure. They they use it for everything. We still got a million. Of Again, lot. these are crates of celery. Right. Mm -hmm. There's so many to uh, create, but we have. Yeah, I'm not sure what the there's there was a somebody told me once. I thought when we showed the slideshow and there was years ago when there were some of the old timers and there was a certain number of that the standard count that was put into a crate. I don't remember if it was 48 or what it was, but there was a certain number that you know got put into the crate, and then that's when they're. Stripping. Who, who was it telling you the strip about the strip? Oh, Mary Lou. The, yeah, the stripper that when they used to harvest it, and then there were the outer ones that were, you know, not. They pulled those off. And, and yeah, her dad called her the fastest stripper in the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this is all hand labor. Yep. yep. Uh, the farms in South Lima, the muck land. A farmer could make a living for his family off in 15 or 20 acres of, of uh, farmland. I mean, now you're, that's a small garden for some people. But, uh, when you stop to think about it, to be able to raise a family and pay your bills and so forth for that mm -hmm. small acreage. This is the crates of celery. Um, we don't know who again, but they're stacked up, they're pretty high. Again, all hand labor. Hand and horse labor. <laughs> right. This is a from the South Lima Cooperative Vegetable Association. The farmers in South Lima, <coughs> after the railroad came through, and of course that was the start of the growth 
of the farm business, they got together and had this association right, <coughs> right next to the railroad track, and you'll, you'll see it as we go on. And they formed and took care of all the shipping of the salary, lettuce, whatever, that went out of South Lima and so forth. And we got a date, we, we found a date up in some place the other day, but we said 1910, was that what we saw? It, yeah, it was down there. We, I couldn't quite, it was either 10 or 1916. We can't write that, we couldn't quite make out. We what think that says campers. Probably a seller. Yeah, and the price was this, 15 or 18. It looked like they had written like one price, I think 15, and then somebody wrote the eight over. So right. apparently the guy who they were paying said, Hey, wait a minute, 15 cents, you know, is I that, want 18 cents. Is that July 4th? 7th, 4th? Yes, 7th, 4th. They yeah, worked on They worked on Yeah, I guess so. Oh, oh, and it's, it, no it, holiday it lists the, uh, the officer, officers and of the uh, of the association, yes. whatever his name's listed there. and. A lot of millions to recognize. It's just interesting to look at the, uh, you know, the, the way it's all written, and they got the you know, the picture of the celery and the and the lettuce there. I mean, in the background, right here. When we moved into our house, there was a the fellow that lived there before had a lot of bags full of like old paperwork and stuff from the farm, it's in the family farm. And he says, oh, you know, I got these bags, I'll, I'll, I'll throw those out. And my husband's like, no, don't throw them out. He says, we want to look through them. <laughs> and we spent hours going through the bags, just, and it, you know, finding, you know, things like this old receipts. And it's, it's really interesting, too, all the paperwork, how, how fancy it is. I mean, the lettering on some of them and the, and the pictures and just, you know, now the receipt is just, you know, it's a pretty bland thing. But they're almost, some of them were almost like pieces of artwork. Uh, just back in that time era, what you know, how they went to all the effort to, to make a really nice looking uh, receipt or bill or whatever. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. All right, this is the original cold storage. There is one there now. This was a wooden building. This Baron Bird was from New York City, and he had heard about the muck lane in South Miami and, and so forth. And being the entrepreneur <coughs> that he was, he sent C.C. Morse to South Lima to oversee the building of a cold storage unit. And this was the first cold storage unit built on the same spot as the present one. This was finished in 1902. In 1904, the train went through town and uh, sent out some sparks <clears throat> onto a roof of a house, and that's when South Lima really had their big fire. As in all cases of older townships and everything, so much of it that was destroyed by fire, it would get started in one building and onto the next. This wooden building in 1904 burned, along with three private, they said three modern, <laughs> in one of the newspapers that I read, wow. uh, along with the post office and the Rough Riders flagpole that stood in front of the post office. Now, I could never find anybody that could tell me anything about the Rough Rider flagpole. It burned. That's all we know about it. It's mentioned in the history the write-up in 1904 about the fire in South Lima. So Berenberg came back in the 1904, started the stone, the black building that's there now. Those blocks came from the black company in Livonia. It's, uh, there's two houses in South Lima built from the Livonia black company also. So the warehouse was rebuilt built in blocks this time. And here is the one, the present one, uh, back, uh, I guess it was 1910, a little before, before it was finished. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that, unfortunately, is what it looks like today. <laughs> Oh, man. Look, had better days. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, here, we are, here, right here is the, the building we just looked at, the Bering Bird Storage. This is the station, of course. We have the boxcar here, and this is the water tanker. Now, we do not have a slide, but we do have a picture, which we hope to get made in a slide or something, of this water tower in the winter when it's frozen over and the ice is just in a mass on the outside of it. But this is where they would stop and pump water for the steam for this. See the cakes of ice? Here, these white things are ice, which is what they iced the uh, celery and the lettuce with and everything. And back in here, and we do have a picture of it, is the ice house. If you were on a ra railroad like this, you had to have an ice house nearby to use to refrigerate your produce with. And this is the track, the Erie Railroad, that ran through from 19, that came through in 1854. This is the, here's your ice house you were talking about, and the depot. The, post, the first post office was in 1854, and it, it was in this depot here. The depot was torn down and carried away with this, you know, probably, I think, in the 1950s. So that was the end of that building. This is a train ticket, uh, 11 cents, to ride from Livonia to South Lima. And I'm sure that on the back of this, it's in some of my paperwork, uh, 19, I think it was 1912 or something like that, uh, that this ticket was good for. It. It was also used for a passenger, you know, to ride to Livonia. I know my husband's talking about taking, jumping on the train to ride up to the school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm sure the boys in South Lima did much more than that, too. Right? <laughs> 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 What made you say that? <laughs> <laughs> she's married to <laughs> heard the story. Back to the post office. When they tore that old post office down, is that when verdicts took it over in the 50s? or No, the post office went from the train station to Brennan's grocery store, yes, across the street that. to Ethel Hyde's oh, okay. grocery and then, store, and then to George Brewer. Oh, okay. Around a lot. This this is the train coming through what they call the cutout between Livonia and South Lima. We only have two pictures of the train that we know of. I see that whole snow. Yes. This is an aerial view, wow. and we think that it's about 1960s, but what buildings are there? Um, yeah. Here's the railroad. This is the cutout back here, what we call the cutout for the King yeah. here. This is the Berenberg, oh, yeah. right there. And because <coughs> of some of the houses, you see all the outbuildings that the places had back then? And these are greenhouses, actually. Everybody had a greenhouse. Um, and most of the greenhouses were torn down after World War II, when prosperity was starting and you didn't have to work that way. We think this is around uh, Claude Moses. You all remember Claude Moses, yeah. Highway Superintendent. Uh, Claude lived in town in, uh, in from him and other people that have lived there before, uh, we determined this must be somewhere in the 1960s. 1960s? Mm -hmm. It's actually about 1954. It's DeWolf Aerial Services that took the picture. They took pictures of all the uh, 
towns and hamlets in Livingston County, as well as most of the right between 52 and 54. Okay. Wow. Well, they come down to far as our house. They didn't get a hotel next to it. Remember the sideline? That's where we live. Okay. They still leave it right next to it. Yeah. And then quads right here. What? Right. I know, I know, I know. All right. This is on the Lima side by the state ditch. Going back to the early history, South Lima was Goose Island and then Hamilton Station in 1854 when the train was coming through town, Mr. Hamilton had a tavern in town. And he said, if you will rename the town Hamilton Station for me, I will give you the land for the railroad. And that's what he did. So it was called Hamilton Station for a number of years, but there was also another Hamilton Station on the Western Union line, and it got confusing, so then they changed it to South Lima. So this is on the Lima side. This is the Henry Griffrath farm house and his greenhouses and his water tower and one of his storages. And this building right here is called the boiler room for a greenhouse. This is where you heated your greenhouse. And Mr. Griffith came from Germany and he went to Irondequoit and was a farmer in Irondequoit. And then he came to South Lima. And when he came to South Lima, he and his family lived. First he built the greenhouse and the boiler room. And they lived in this boiler room until well, he built his show place here. The wood he sent to Germany and had the wood sent from Germany. The downstairs, the main floor, all the floors are beautiful parquet patterned wood. The floors are there. They're beautiful. Gladys, where is that? Diagonal from Mary Lou. Oh yeah. Okay. With Mike Biner Jones. Oh, okay. It. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's a young man that owns this. He has a couple apartments in it. And he, when they built, the, uh, tore the greenhouse down, they did not build, tear down the boiler room. And he's made the boiler room into a little house. It's sufficient uh, for one, two people at the most. He put a loft in it for a bedroom. And so he has three incomes from here. The barns, unfortunately, burned like everything else. And not sure, probably the, that went with it, the water tower. But this was one, he was a very, something I read in the newspaper said he was a very profitable farmer, Mr. Griffith. He um, was one of the first, we're not sure he was the first, but to have a car in South Lima. And my husband lived across the street and they used to watch him on Sunday morning. He would start his car. He had a circular driveway around the house and he would drive his car around and around, and around <laughs> to warm it up so that he could drive it a quarter mile down the road to the chapel, to the church, <laughs> and drive it back and put it back in the garage. <laughs> we do have a picture of, no, that's not his car, is it? Oh, I don't get old. Well, uh, it's a riffraff person's uh, car. Uh, so this is a riffraff car. And riffraff is down in is here. Mm -hmm. um, there's a house here that we all know as the Art Mouse Morris House. We're not sure just who built it, but that is a house here. And then this house here is the original part of the original Hamilton's Tavern that I told you about, mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Hamilton. He had a very successful tavern. You can see he's on the little higher ground here because he had built well before these other houses 
And he had a tavern, and there was also the Bratsons. Remember, I mentioned the Bratsons yeah. up on Bratson Hill. Their two taverns were two on the main route between Canandaigua and Batavia. And according to the newspaper articles that I've read, they were very, very popular and very full and so forth. Now, we don't, there isn't a site, a site on here of the house, but this tavern was bigger. It had a dance floor on the second floor. And they took the smaller part, which was on this side, and moved it across the driveway, and that's where George Burdick lived. Probably some of you have gone, went to George Burdick's greenhouses. He sold plants and so forth. He had a greenhouse. Everybody in South Lane had a greenhouse, yeah. uh, you know. So this building here, Hamilton's Tavern, was uh, torn down very methodically and taken to Genesee Country Museum in 1985. They erected it as a town hall. So if you go to the Genesee Country Museum, the town hall is this house here that they took out of South Lane. Somebody asked me about that and I told them I didn't know where the town hall was. <laughs> no. But what date is this? Pardon? What is the date on that floor? I, well this house was it there until 1985? I I don't know for sure. Uh, we I, I'm not sure. I would be lying if I tried to tell you something. Uh, for a number of years, it was it was a private home, and then for a number of years, it was used for a potato warehouse. I was going to say, the Genesee Country Museum, where it's uh, the town hall, it has a bell tower on top of it, but that, that came from somewhere else, from all the towers and all the buildings. Yeah, so they sort of pieced it together. So the, the, the building was from South Lyme, but the bell tower came from, I can't recall where, from other, from other town. This is Abbey High. Oh my God. Now, we, don't, we didn't have many pictures of people, but Abbey High was South Lyme. Wow. Uh, she's four years old here. Wow. This is her doll, and she had it, and uh, Ethel died at 97 years of age. She closed the store about 1991, and no, 81. And she had this doll. This doll was sold at auction. Uh, they had an auction at her home after she passed away. Uh, it sold for over four hundred dollars. I would have liked it, but not for four hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this of Ethel because Ethel was self claimer. We have several pictures of Ethel. Oh. This is Ethel's house where she sold Rochester ice cream. <laughs> Ethel and her mother started with an ice cream store when they first came. They lived in. South Lima, down next to Mary Lou there, actually. Yeah. Uh, but when they moved in here, they had a little business selling ice cream here. Here's her sign. She, you know, she was a young woman here with her cat eating an ice cream cone. That's actually an ice cream cone in the hand. Uh, and she again advertising Rochester ice cream. Wow. And here we are again. Now, this is the story. See, the sign is gone from the ice cream and but has moved over here. She moved, I don't know whether they built on or if this little <laughs> extension was there. But now she's into the grocery store and the ice cream. And here is Ethel, again in front of her store here. Um, look at that fancy gas pump there. There's lots of people that would like that. Uh, and this up here says... Straight Run Pennsylvania Gasoline. I'm glad you can see it. We figured that a pipeline, Straight Run Pennsylvania. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this is one of the Griffrath girls. Remember, I just, she was the one that, who parents came from Germany. We figured it must be when they first had the pump put in, so they're like, well, you know, showing off. Yeah. Certainly. Yes, <laughs> Lee, how old is that pump? How, how old is the pump? How old is it? I have no idea. But, it's like but you wish you had it, right? When we were going through these, we said, Leo, no, you'll know. <laughs> and again, as I say, we featured Ethel. Here's Ethel again. By this time, she's got the post office in her home. Um, Ethel was quite an entrepreneur. Yeah. She had the ice cream, and now we got groceries, and we got the gasoline, we got the post office in here, so that was like the hopping place in town, I guess, you know, everything was okay. She didn't, she didn't have her spits yet, her dog. No, she, Ethel always had her dog, yes. Yeah, but it's not in the picture. And she yelled at her dog like we yelled at our kids. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Wilton Ward. Wilton came to town and worked uh, I think Russell said he was a foreman for C.C. Morse, and he did work on the muck land, and he rented and lived with Ethel and her mother here. And again, another picture of Ethel. Now the gas station tank has moved over a little bit. It's a little bit different. I don't know if it's a different pointer. Yeah. This, folks, is South Lima Fire Department. <laughs> Back in 1904, when we had the big fire and it practically gutted yeah. South Lima, uh, the Bucket Brigade couldn't keep up. You know, I mean, there just wasn't that much water available. So they got a chemical man drawn fire truck here. Uh, this is the only picture that we have of it. This fire truck is now in Livonia. Uh, Livonia Fire Department has it. They repainted it, um, and it's up there. It says Livonia on it, but we all know it's South Lane. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it really moved around for a while. Pardon? That moved around for a while. How's that, Ken? Everybody steal it. We have okay. it here in Oh, really? Really? Oh, yeah. So the fire department would so steal it from the other place? So <laughs> now, there is a, we have a picture of the fire house, which was a little building just big enough for this uh, chemical fire truck to go in. But it came in our possession after we made the slideshow. We just haven't made it got a slide of it yet, so we're in hopes. And it's just a, a building that said South Lima Fire Department on it. And um, when uh, it was torn down, um, my brother-in-law, Morris Smith, had it and had it on in front of his garage for a number of years, and now his son has it. So wow. South Lima Firehouse has still existed as far as the sign is concerned. All right, here we are, this, this, the, this store here is the Brennan General Store. Mr. Brennan lived upstairs and had his grocery store down here. This house next door, we're not sure who would build it, but the Alexanders, yeah, Andersons, I do hear it today. Do you, have you any idea who built that? No, but we might be able to tell you from the um, paperwork we got when we bought it. Yes. Yes. And by the way, I want to tell you something in passing. A lot of the pictures that I got, that I had, came from some black and white negatives. If, if you've got old black and white negatives in your possession that you're thinking of just throwing them out someday, don't do it because there's a lot of history in those negatives. The Andersons who bought this house after it was sold at auction brought me a paper bag full of black and white negatives, you know, the ones that we all have. 
<coughs> and said they had found it in a uh, storage chest at the foot of the stairs. Is that not right? Yes, there's a chest there. Yeah. You know, in, in the houses built in the 1900s, at the foot of the stairs, you'd be have to have a storage unit with a lift top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the auctioneer, the family, they evidently didn't get into it during the auction. Is that right, Chris? Yes. But anyway, he came to the post office one day and he said, here's a bag of negatives. Do you want them? I never throw anything away, asked my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I said, sure. And by holding them up to the light and so forth, I pulled out quite a few and had them developed. And they're really conversation conversation pieces, as you will see when we get to them. But uh, anyway, this is Mr. Brennan's store. Uh, it later was sold to Mr. Carpenter. The post office was in there for a number of years. This building is still there. Where is it? Right no. next to the very first. Oh, is right oh, next oh, to it. Yes, okay. Yes. Right. When one of the owners had it, he okay. took the windows out and boarded up the front. Wow. But these two windows are up there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. And just a case in point, this building was housed some old cars for a number of years, 20 some years. A gentleman from Rochester had old cars in there and just let them go. Three years ago, he put it on eBay. And it was bought by a gentleman in Florida who came up that summer. He paid $3,400 for it. The Russell went over and talked to him. He had a, a car business where he customized cars. And he was so excited. And he was going to custom, put the cars in down here and work on them. And he and his wife would live up here in the apartment in the winter. And he worked all that summer. Uh, Russell says the foundation is in fairly good condition, and the clapboards are wonderful on it. I mean, they're 100 years old, you know. Uh, he was going to come back the next year, and we've never seen him since. So we don't know what's really, what the story is on the building, but it's still there. When was that last used for a, a commercial business? That was? Well, you know Russell? That, that was a, a store. That had a meeting in 1940. 1940s. 1940s. Right. Uh, this is a house. Well, wait a minute. Here, you see the chapel here? The church. And this is here. We're not sure who bought it, but. Uh, in the earlier times, in the 20s and 30s and 40s, they, they had a bakery there, oh and gosh. they raised, they Chicken, had chickens out in the back. Marlene lives Marlene there now. Yes, and this is where Marlene lives now. There was a bakery and they had chickens still. <laughs> you didn't miss all that. <laughs> you didn't know that? We've lived there for 23 years, and people still introduce us. Have you met the Kramers? They live in the Taylor home. Yeah, the, Taylors. the Taylors were the family there before. But notice the dirt road. We're not sure just who these people are. But we know that this is the church, and you'll see later. There's a room in here where there's no houses at all right here at this point. In the 1917, uh, there are houses built in between there and this house. All right, this is the South Lima Chapel, which was built in 1897. Um, you notice here that there's an uh, open porch. That was so that if it was raining, you could drive your horse right up through here, and the ladies could step out on the porch and go in without getting wet. Because back here is the barn that housed your horses while you were at Chatham. Um, and it was first built as a chapel. Uh, there was no denomination and everything. It closed in 1976 as a Presbyterian church. Uh, it's been made into a family home. Every time it's sold, 
we're afraid that whoever buys it is going to take those beautiful stained glass windows out and sell them or something. This stained glass window goes from, this is the first floor, mm -hmm. this is the upstairs floor here, and continues right up to there. It's beautiful. This, the stained glass windows uh, have banners on the lower portions that have the names of families mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. donate the money in honor of some relatives or, or their family or whoever. So you can still read them, they're not real clear, but you can make out some of the names right now. And so, like I said, that the upper portion uh, of that window is actually the bedroom upstairs. Mm -hmm. and the bottom of that window is right at the floor level. So when you're in that bedroom, it's got this huge you know, the upper section of the, the stained glass window in the, in the wall of the bedroom. Uh, again, this, this is a uh, postcard that I have from Church Street. This was Mr. Brennan. Mr. Brennan seemed to be the only one that made postcards from South Lima, and he just called the streets anything he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one street, as you know. Yeah. Sometimes they call it Main Street. There's one poster calls it West Main Street, depending which direction you're looking. And now it's called Church Street because the chapter is Again, so the dirt roads. It made it look like a much bigger place than it really was. Do they know when the uh, road was paved first? I can't. I don't know. That's I don't know. Had to be paved in the 30s. In the 30s, Ken. Kenny Clank lived in South Lake. That's why Kenny. We moved in 37. Mm -hmm. All right. The, I know that one. The church was up to the right of this building. This house here is still there. It's got apartments in it right at the present time. This is the Guernsey Hotel. Mr. Guernsey ran a hotel, and out in back here, the sign, if you can read it, it says, well, for one thing, Linda found it says Guernsey Hotel. Hotel right there. Guernsey. Hotel Guernsey, all right. The sign back here, he was a fur buyer. He bought furs and had a business there. And uh, all these buildings. Pardon? Yeah. This was the ice house? Yeah. Okay. And again, fire consumed so many of the buildings as they did in the earlier. Um, this is now, as I say, an apartment house owned by Pat Paddle and Ski. You might know, tell the, the bar, the nickname of the bar. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't forget that. That's the best, that's the best part. Yeah, that's creepy. What? I know I can What was it? The bucket of blood. <laughs> Everybody knew about the bucket of blood. Because there are a lot of fights there, so that's how the, the bar got the Jack, your uh, supervisor, Jack Tubbs, uh, was a South Lyman. He grew up here. Uh, my husband tells the story of the kids when he was 12, 14 would go down here at night and go upstairs because the tubs lived up here and watch out the windows while there, all the fights were going on. <laughs> <laughs> During Prohibition, let's see, Lima had to be dry. Was Lima dry during Prohibition? Anyway, they moved the business from here across the street to Slavonia's side and carried on for a few years. <laughs> this was before the Tubbs book. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now I told you that some of these black and white negatives when I got them developed were conversation pieces. This is one of them. This is the Quackenbush family. This is Grandpa Gilbert Quackenbush and one of his sons. I think it's Raymond, I'm not sure. But these are pelts of muskrats on wow. structures. And now remember I told you that the farms in South Lima were very small, 15, 20 acres and so forth. But you still had to eat in the winter time. So everybody trapped. When the state ditched in 1870, when the state came into town and dug the state ditch, 
That's what drained South Lima. So that the, that's when the muckland, you know, they got dry and was able to be used and everything. So they had a great place to set their traps with a ditch running down through the lowest part of the town. And so this is what they did in the winter time. Uh, they would trap. And then they had a fur buyer right there in town, Mr. Guernsey. Um, and this is one of those conversation pieces, as I say, that I got out of the black and white films that came from uh, Anderson's that they gave to me. Again, uh, are these muskrats? Yeah. Uh, this is his kill for the day. Now, how would you like all of these nailed up on the back of your house? <laughs> yes, this, this is Anderson's house. This is your house, Chris. <laughs> you wonder why the smell is. They don't have the little little stumps there. Very few of them really have much weight on them. Right. What better way to dry your I remember the people that lived there before uh, Dawn and Chris, right behind the house, there would be a nice warm spot, spot in the springtime, you said this rock and the snakes, the snakes would come out like crazy, they would come out of the sun themselves on the rocks because the people just have this you know, south sun in the springtime, it was cool out, it would be nice and warm there, so in the popular spot for Skunks and snakes and <laughs> and look at this one. This is the again. This is the cellar door, Chris. So yep. it had to be in the back of the house. But this is Grandpa Gilbert Quackenbush and his son George. Well, I have another picture with this. A couple more boys over here. But this is the one I say is the conversation piece. You're all familiar with Reminisce or Country Magazine. Yeah. yeah. I've always been tempted to send one of these in <laughs> because that's the type of thing that you see in the country and reminisce magazines. And again, the Quackenbush boys with their fishing. Of course, Canisius Lake, like all lakes, was cleaner and really produced more. And the Quackenbush boys were trappers and Fisherman. And this is just an example of what Kanisha Slate produces, or did produce. <laughs> How about that? That's John Quackenbush, one of the Quackenbush boys, showing off his prize. And again, this is another one of those black and white negatives. So if you run in, there were a bunch of those negatives, run off. Light box or something, and just make sure that there isn't history being thrown out the door. All right, this is South Lima School. Wow. This is up on the corner of what is now Garden Street in South Lima. This is uh, the original school, and I think Linda read about 1854 or something. Um, this school, they decided in the late 1800s that they needed a bigger school because at one time, I think I read it, said there were 68 children there. Um, they, they took this down, moved it down Swamp or Garden Street, and erected it down there about a quarter of a mile, used it for a potato warehouse. And in 1902, the original school that still there was built. Wow. I remember that because Ethel Hyde was to start first grade that year and she had measles. I just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, uh, this was built in 1902. And this building is still there. Um, Robin Mellenbacher owns it and he's made a beautiful home of it. He took all the hardwood floors up, sanded them, and put them all back down again. Very nice. 
And this is just a, we have got a lot of them identified, but they probably would mean only 10. Which one's Russell? Where's Russell? <laughs> I don't think, I have no idea. We just threw one. We've got lots of school kids. Well, you had eight grades in two Right. There was two rooms in the new, the new school. We had two rooms. All right. This is the South Lima baseball team. Um, I think we've got it. We've got them identified on the back of the pictures, but I, I can't recall just what they were. They must have been somewhere or other. We knew it. They must have been in, out in front of the schoolhouse because there's something about. The, the background that we figured out where it was from. But we don't know who they are. Oh my gosh. And this is the South Lima Athletic Club. Wow. This picture was taken in the front room of the C.C. Morris House, uh, which you will be seeing later, and was owned by my brother-in-law, Russell's brother Morris, and the first time we saw this, he said, that's my, that's our living room. Uh, some way he knew, so I don't know, and I don't, we don't know who the coach is, but we know one of the boys here is a paddock. I can't remember which one. All right, this is the crew setting out to go up the railroad track to shovel out the train. Now that's the way that, uh, in the road crew, bunches of men would get together and go out and shovel either the railroad or the road, whichever needed that. This is, we put this in just an example to say, we may live in South Lima, but we get snow. <laughs> we got snowed in for a week, huh? I think that's, I think that's Herman Sackett's car right there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and it's going Shelter. down, it's in front of uh, Harry Clement's house. Show their way out. Yeah. Wow. All right, this is the only known tornado in South Lima. Wow. Claude Paddock took this picture. And he thinks it's...